Yo, what is going on guys? This is Jacked. White Joe here today. Today we're coming at you with my updated DDD decklist slash combo video for July 2022. So yeah, uh, third day of July now. Um, for all of you guys that live in the US, uh, happy uh, US Day uh, for Canada. Uh, we already had uh, July 1st, happy Canada Day. And uh, yeah, so Basically, um, I was going to wait a little bit to do this and see what I was playing because, you know, the format's getting a little, just a little bit stale, right? I mean, um, it's a fairly, it's a pretty fair format other than Scythe. Um, other than that, I mean, the way Scythe kind of works right now is a lot of people are just kind of waiting for the main phase where you can Dark Ruler them just kind of win. So there's no, nothing really crazy. I mean, I think we're going to be kind of thankful for a format like this when some, like, Splite comes out in the near future. Um, I still, I, I kind of know what Splite does. I haven't really looked at any, like, deck like any plays of the deck or anything i haven't really looked into it but i know the deck is like insane like it's just absolutely decimating the ocg right now like it's tier zero like no problem and there's also terra elements which are actually pretty good i think that's like a fair fair trade-off uh with that deck um but yeah so anyways guys we still have like a fairly uh fair format for us to be able to compete like i know it's a little bit stale i'm playing like the pier it's kind of like the same Pure isn't like uh, very linear. It, it It is, but I mean, like there's a lot of different things you can do, especially when you have like, uh, you have to play against certain boards and that kind of like keeps you intrigued. However, like, I mean, we've been playing this for so long that like, you know, I tried the synchro list and it's just like, uh, it's just not, the synchro list just isn't good. Like you might as well just honestly play like punk, uh, punk, uh, punk uh, adventure. Like honestly, it just does what synchro does, but like way better and just, with less cards need necessary, right? And just plays around Nib. It's just, you might as well just play that and not even bother the Synchro. So yeah, so I decided to spice it up a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think you guys are gonna really like this list. Um, I'll just tell you right now, it's not pure, it's not Synchro. Uh, yeah, it's hybrid. So it's basically, what I found is the hybrid is basically pure, except your extra deck has a few flex spots that you can actually utilize and it had it gives it a much higher higher ceiling right so before when i kind of tested it didn't really find anything different it was mainly like why would i go for this line if i can just go for really good pure barren plays right maybe going second i've acts like boral sword and stuff like that other than that it was just like i just didn't really find a point and i was testing some new combos like just like off the top of my head last night and i just found this one combo um i kind of reverted to back how i initially played the new sport when it came out and just trying like those kind of lines. And then I found this insane combo that just works so well um, that I just had to showcase this. Like it was just, it just blew my mind how crazy this combo was. And I was like, there's no way this works. And I like looked back at it like four times and yeah, the combo works. So I'm gonna go over that combo. That'll just be the one, that'll just be the one combo I'll probably go over. I might go over like another two car combo, but uh, I found a two car combo you can use, but you need to switch. There's, there's like one flex spot in the extra deck that like, you have to play a certain card for that I wouldn't really bother putting in. Um, and plus the two card combo in this deck, you're better off just going for the 100% pure route because you end on broken, right? I mean, the two card combo and pure is just still such a broken combo, right? Plays in a nib, but it, if you resolve it, you, it's very, very hard to lose, right? So anyways, guys, yeah, so I'm going to jump into my deck list. Again, this is hybrid, and I think going forward, this is what I'll be playing for the next while. Um, I actually... I haven't taken it to like a tournament yet because I just put this together. So I haven't seen it in tournament plays. So some of the extra deck, um, mainly the one slot is kind of up for debate right now, just depending on how grind game is and stuff. I really have to test it in like a five round tourney kind of deal to really see where that spot reserved. But for now, I think it's solidified kind of where I want it to be. And uh, yeah, I just really want to show you guys this list. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And I didn't realize how broken it was till I was just kind of messing around with some of the combos. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, I just found so many crazy uh, different outlets you can kind of go around. It's just a, it's, it's like a more fun way to play the deck, but also can do the same stuff, but not more. And you still have the same spots reserved. And those spots that you are kind of missing from all this, the selection in pure is kind of filled up by what you can do in a hybrid sense. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys uh, this list. It's 100% competitive, uh, I can tell you right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump into this without any uh, further talking anymore because I gotta, kind of have to go in a little bit. So uh, yeah. Let's just dig right into the, the deck profile, shall we? I'll see you on my mat. Okay guys, so here's the uh, deck list. So 
Yeah, before we uh, just jump right into this, uh, don't hold me accountable for certain ratios because I haven't done this. I haven't done a tournament uh, setting with this yet. I literally just put this uh, list together last night uh, when I was testing combos and found this is just the best way to go about it. Um, in terms of like grind game, again, I might need to like switch up a couple things, but I think the way it is and the way you can run the hybrid, uh, it just kind of works uh, because you have a different uh, setting of bounce back plays. And also you can kind of just start off with pure plays if you want to and then bounce back with a, a hybrid variant on your second turn, <clears throat> right? So yeah, uh, let's just get into this. Again, don't hold me accountable to certain ratios. This is uh, hasn't been fully tested in a tournament setting, but I think this is honestly completely fine with what I'm running. Um, so yeah, start off the main. Uh, we're going to go three Kepler, uh, right? So I'm not going to lay out all three. It's just because it's like a little bit of a different uh, deck list here. So Three Kepler, right, your, it's still your Stratos in the deck. Uh, can, uh, it's really effective. Uh, still in the hybrid, uh, the effect where it bounces a card to get a card out of your scale is pretty, uh, uh, pretty solid still, right? Um, just to free up your scales if you need to. Uh, Triple Griffin, uh, this stays at three in this list. Um, it's the, still, it still remains uh, either the first or second best card in the list. Um, it serves so many purposes, especially in this hybrid list. And uh, yeah, he's obviously involved in the bro the super broken combo I found out. So again, we'll get into that after the list. Uh, three Copernicus, uh, Foolish Burial, right? Still, even in the hybrid, it's still uh, a standard three of it's level four, which is necessary. Your level four is still uh, uh, your gasoline source. It's your fuel source essentially in this deck still, uh, but it doesn't heavily rely. That's a nice thing too, is that you're not heavily reliant on the... Uh, on the rank four plays, but you still you still really want this. Even on the synchro list, you're still playing this at three, right? To uh, get a free foolish burial as part of a standard combo. Um, three swirl slime, right? So uh, swirl slime, I mean, it's standard three of in synchro, pure, and uh, hybrid, right? Don't have to explain it. I think this is the best uh, combo piece in the deck just because going second, if you have this with uh, this and another two plus combo pieces alongside it, um, it breaks so many boards because this alone is just such a good, it's just such a good card on its own, right? Or not on its own, sorry, with the, uh, in a three card combo, three plus card combo scenario. Uh, that card's crazy. Uh, so yeah, uh, onto the tuners, right? So since this is hybrid, playing double Lamia and Ghost. So we kind of want to see Lamia. We don't, in, in our combos, we don't really start off with it, but it's also nice to just see as well, uh, for what we're playing in the hybrid. So, um, yeah, double Lamy and a Ghost. Ghost is essential for the combo. And Ghost, like, in this list especially, is actually really good. Uh, being able to uh, continually dump resources and be able to recycle Banish cards. It's actually really nice. And uh, being a level 2 tuner is actually really, really good in this list, right? So, yeah, and Lamy is uh, it's very essential for the combo that I came out with yesterday, too. So, yeah, I uh, need to play that. Uh, one of Pendulums. Uh, Thomas, Ragnarok, and Orthros. So Orthros is just a one of in this list. You don't need to run two. However, he's, he is still part of your pure combos, obviously. Um, but you, uh, you don't always go... Um, he's not always essential in your combo, so you just run him at one, right? You don't need any more than one in this list. Uh, Ragnarok and Thomas, uh, yeah, these obviously stay at one. Ragnarok stays at one. You can put him at two in the hybrid list just to uh, turn, out, um, uh, turn out initial uh, spell and traps uh, when you're going second. Um, kind of like uh, the days of Tri Brigade when you turn out the Revolts. Uh, you basically reveal Swirl Slime with this, and if they didn't have a response, or uh, uh, Pandemonium, like back in the days, where if you had this Diffusion when you reveal Swirl Slime, you knew if you resolved it, you literally just won. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, but th this works fine. I mean, I, I never miss uh, in testing. I just did like a couple hours testing last night after I uh, got home from uh, working. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I didn't need more than one. It's not essential for, he's only essential for your, like, pure combos, really. Uh, but you, again, you only need one of him. And you can recycle him back with Thomas. The pure definitely is a two of, uh, because you, the, your three card combo is, like, always surrounding the Baron combo, right? But this, this, uh, deck can do other things. So, yeah, I don't need him more. And the last, uh, one is you still play one Necro, one Typhon. Uh, this is standard, right? You don't want to really be opening any of these. But even if you do open them, it's nice to, it's very nice to, uh, dish off, uh, uh, Griffin. That way you get to, uh, get a free draw and then this is engraved. You don't have to worry about a Copernicus. Like, if you're missing a Copernicus, that's uh, pretty nice, right? So, yeah, that's it for the DD Monsters. Uh, I don't know how many. So, like, uh, three, so 15, um... Yeah, it's a 20 monster count for the DDs. So half the deck is DD monsters, which is nice because you're primarily focused on uh, three-card combos. So uh, 
In theory, um, I haven't done the calculations, but I, I did a while ago uh, when you're running half, but in theory, you should almost always be seeing uh, a three card combo when you're half your deck is, uh, when half your deck space is monster count, especially with Rotas, right? Like, uh, you know, Dark Contra at the gate, right? So speaking of Dark Contra, so I need new sleeves. I ran players. These are the players choice sleeves I used for uh, uh, the regionals and they're good for one tournament and after that, like just play Dragon Shields. The Dragon Shield rigid backs are like just so good. They stay they stay uh, nice for like so long, uh, but they didn't have the white rigid backs. So I just ran the uh, PC, the PC whites for uh, the last regionals that I was at. The only one I've been at for a while. So anyways, guys, uh, three gates. This is standard lineup still. This is a... Uh, for part of your combo um is it part of the combo um there is some combos we can end on this right so uh, i i still like running license it uh, makes a full two car combo um it makes it so if you open uh swirl griffin copernicus and you go like the baron combo uh you just get to end on this as well uh it's, it's a pretty nice card right honestly i don't mind drawing it uh, i did run it for the regionals because i wanted to try to minimize my deck space for as many hand traps possible um but uh I never needed it at the tournament, but uh, this just comes up a lot. Um, so yeah, there was another combo before I found out the really broken combo where uh, I would use, um, I would search this out. I would use, I would scale the, uh, I'm not running in this list, but uh, it was before I found out this broken combo that I found last night. What I would do is I would add this off of uh, Caesar and then I would uh, scale up the, uh, not Apocalypse, um, Armageddon, right? The the new one, the new one, the level eight, uh, Vice Vice Armageddon, whatever. So I'd scale him and him, and uh, Ride and Rock, and I would summon the Vice, popping this and uh, the Spare Contra, which is usually this, and then uh, it would bring it down to a six, and then Ride and Rock would revive the uh, level six, the Genghis, and I would just be able to X Y Z into the uh, Caesar, while it still has the effect to be able to gain a thousand life points and pop a card, which is really nice. And then um, this would just, when I pop this, it recycles the uh, Kepler for follow-up. So that was like a little thing I was doing before I uh, found this in insane combo. Uh, so I found that combo and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to showcase it because I'm not playing it anymore. It's not anywhere near as good as what the combo I found. But um, yeah, that, it was just a little cool combo that I found when I was run, uh, running the, uh, Vice, the Vice Requiem. That's, that's what his name is. So last for the DD cards, DD Headhunt. Oh, this card's insane. Uh... Yeah, uh, this card is like on its own. Um, if they drop with you for three, this card should just win you the game, especially if you have a hand trap. Uh, this card is just so good. If you use this correctly, it's just it's so blow <laughs> DD head. It's, it's probably one of the most powerful in our type traps. Uh, one of them anyways. Um, I mean, there's some trap decks right there just broken, but this card's insane. It's just so, so strong. Um, uh, for consistency, I'm running triple map. So the reason why I'm running map right now, you can run small world or map, but uh, the combo I do, it, um, I can start off with normal summoning Kepler and then do the three card combo. Uh, I'll show you in a bit. Like I'll actually play with the map just to show you guys in uh, testing. doesn't really matter. But um, the other thing about map too is that uh, Psychic and Punisher, right? Um, I was running this uh, two tournaments ago, like two locals ago. Uh, with the psychic end and uh, oh at the uh, there was a um, ha there's another case tournament at Woodstock uh, I lost up to two Drytron players in the end uh, in game three from like very 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 unlikely circumstances in both the games so it kind of sucked and I'm gonna go over that but anyways I played this and it was just insane um, I could tell the guy kind of like folded his hand out where I didn't I knew he didn't have nib so what I did was I used Piri map started out and I went uh, I made psychic chem punisher it was basically Baron combo with the field spell <laughs> it was basically baron combo but instead of baron it was the psychic m punisher with the field spell and a headhunt and so with that when he when if he went to battle phase uh he was playing sharks like shark turbo um if he went to battle phase uh psychic end goes to 9500 <laughs> it was so crazy so uh yeah and then going second if you uh, can break a board or you like double hand trap someone you can make uh uh psychic m punisher with this card uh it's crazy. Like, uh, basically, Psychic End will gain 5,000 because you're not trying to do half damage. So he basically gains 5,000 going to battle phase. If they're, still, if they're still alive, he gains another 5k. And they have to swing over it to get around it. Uh, or they can, like, pop a Mirror Jade, but that's a way to get around it. But um, you'll usually be able to play around the Mirror Jade trying to s destroy itself. So so going into hand traps, this is kind of why I really like the hybrid over the Synchro. Is that you can still do your two-card combo stuff and still play a lot of non-engine. So, yeah, nine hand traps, essentially 10. Like, call by right now is basically 
a go second card uh, because Scythe. So if you can stop them enough to the point where they don't have a form of negation to stop the uh, Scythe, just, uh, just to help the Scythe come out, you may just call by. And then this card defensive is insane. Like it can auto win some games. This card's like one of the best cards in the format. Like you have to find a way to put this in your deck, right? So yeah, and then these three hand traps are the best generics. You can also grab these. If you decide to play Chaos Ruler in this list, you can also grab these off Chaos Ruler if you can find the room, uh, which is kind of cool, right? Um, and yeah, I think these are just the best generic hand traps right now. Outside of like Imperm 2, Imperm's kind of better than Valor, I'd say, just because you can use it on your turn as well. Um, and it's, it shuts out certain things, right? Uh, the only thing is with in this deck is that um, Valor is a tuner. Number one is Valor is a tuner. And number two is that... Uh, um, it doesn't fill up my spell and trap zones, which I can kind of do, right? Um, so yeah, I'd rather just play Valor, especially for the hybrid list. In Pure, I'd probably just rather go with uh, Imperm just because I can hard draw it and uh, I don't need a tuner to summon, right? So, and call by. So that's like 10 uh, to help go in second. Or the other thing too is a lot of people are playing, um, a lot of people are playing like Dark Ruler and stuff right now. You can't play, it's really hard to play droplets. Uh, it's uh, kind of very hard to play droplets in the pure version because you can't really send pendulums, right? It does work, but you kind of neg hard. But the thing is, um, when you are, uh, uh, when you play Dark Ruler, like a lot of people are playing like Dark Ruler, right? You can't, and like uh, evenly sometimes. Uh, Dark Ruler, the thing is, you're trying to stay alive, right? So if you use pure and you're at 4k and someone, um, if someone uses uh, da -da 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 droplets against you, right? You're basically going to lose unless you have something to protect you. So if you have like a nib in hand, this helps keep you alive, right? Like all these hand traps are here to keep you alive, essentially. Um, so yeah, that's the purpose. You can't really run Dark Ruler in this list because like I said, you really need to see, find a way to defend yourself with your low life points, especially with uh, droplets running around. So the last card, uh, Scythe. So yeah, this was part of the combo I found. Um, it's, yeah, it involves Scythe. So I don't know if many of you guys seen this coming. Maybe you did, I don't know, but uh, Scythe is the 40 the 40th card in this deck um basically if you draw this when you have only pure if you want to only go for a pure play it's kind of just not amazing you can still play you can still make the like a scythe combo but you can still play right um it's just kind of a dead card sometimes but it's so worth playing like the combo is insane so i basically have it there to showcase the combo so yeah last card is scythe for 40 cards uh let's go into the extra deck here so the extra is gonna be pretty interesting so, extra deck, double Genghis, um, one High King Genghis, uh, no room for D-Arc. It would be nice because, like, having the fusion on the bounce back is kind of nice, right? But, uh, I mean, you don't need it, to be honest. Usually, you're, if you go through all three of these through your board and you don't get Nib, it's very, very, very hard for you to lose. Uh, so, Synchros, there's another one, but I'll, I'll put it together with a certain group. So, Siegfried and Psychic End. So, Psychic End's like the one flex spot. Um, but I think this card is so insane that if you have a chance to make it while you make Piri, um, it's a game ender. Like people literally have to scoop their cards. Like I've had, uh, about three games in the, in the last little bit I played this with Piri where people just had to scoop their cards cause they had no answer to this. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. You basically want to make this go in second. He'll gain and then he'll gain again. So their only way out around this is you can just sit on this and it has like 10,000 more attack. They have no way to crash into it. They can't get rid of their, uh... Uh, they can't use their mirror jade to pop it at end phase kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's impossible for decks to out, so I think it's just highly worth playing. Um, and then on the bounce back too, if you're missing it, if you don't, if you feel like you don't have like enough of the uh, engine to keep going, you can basically just find a way to make this on your bounce back, and then it's just game because you're you'll probably be lower on life points. But uh, yeah, in testing it works really well. So yeah, we're doing that. For the XYZs, double the Caesars, and then the tell on the one machine X. So uh yeah this is standard like you need to run these in any uh, i mean if you're running synchro you can't right but if you're running the level fours you need to run these um and then uh caesar is insane it's still just like literally one of the best boss monsters in the deck and machine x you only need at one uh the reason why you only need machine x at one is because this deck uh it's a hybrid variant right so if you run through your pure uh stuff you don't need another bounce back right you have a synchro place to keep you going and uh yeah it's you don't need the second one it would be nice to have the second one but again this deck essentially hybrid to be super 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 effective it would need a 20 card extra deck uh but we can't do that unfortunately so yeah so i just went with one, one machine x and i've seen i've taken a look at some of the hybrid lists that topped in the ocg and they just want to run one machine x so it's definitely just completely fine uh, like i said i haven't tested this in a tournament testing our tournament settings so uh it was between uh, a second one of this or a psychic end or like um 
uh, another link, right? Uh, maybe like a Boral Sword or something. But the deck does completely fine, especially like this can easily replace a Boral Sword. It just literally is GG's when you summon that thing. So yeah, I just figured this this is just gonna benefit you the most if you play this thing. So that's it for the XYZs. Uh, moving on to the links. So uh, double Gilgamesh, you only need two. You only need two in this list. You're only gonna ever go through two in your first turn. You don't need one on the bounce back um, because you have other uh, plays. You have synchro plays. It's a hybrid, right? You only need two. Um, but you still can do the full on pure combos with uh, running two of this. Um, sometimes if you do the Baron combo, you can actually find you can actually just run into only using one, so you can have a second one on the bounce back. Um, it's pretty cool. I like the way uh, this deck can. Uh, I like the the reason why I kind of like Hybrid too is that it's a way to um, you have to you basically have to uh, it really forces you to be able to resource uh, do really good resource management, right? So yeah, that's why kind of why I really like this because it kind of puts your brain to work, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, like uh, what happens on the follow up, right? So yeah. Uh, the two Gilgamesh is completely fine, though, in uh, hybrid. Uh, next off is the problem cards of the format. So, Dagda, Halk, Baron. This is TG Wonder Magician. I don't know where my Wonder Magician is. I think my brother has all the ones from OTS 17, but I can't find any. So, just going to put TG Hyper Librarian because level 5 and is a TG. So, yeah, this is a Wonder Magician, let's just say. Okay. And then, these three are, the, are the, probably the big problem cards of the format right now, obviously. So... You know, what do you do? You deal with problems or do you just kind of join the problems? So we're going to join the problems. OK, <laughs> so um, the cool thing I like about this deck, guys, is that, like I said, DDD, the way it works is that it can really do a good job in mirroring the bet. And if, if there's a synchro deck, DDD can basically mirror what that deck does, but better like virtual world. It did that uh, right now. It's doing this and sword. So I also proved it can also do kind of what sword soul does, but with a better board. Um, it's just always like a little bit more fragile, right? But the combo this one does, uh, I'll show it to you. It, it, uh, doesn't fully play around Nib, like, cause they have like adventure token and stuff like that. But we can also, if we do get Nib, I'll show you, like if we do get like double hand trapped or whatever, we can still end on the, uh, machine X, uh, like a DD, a machine X headhunt kind of interruption with the hand trap potentially. Um, the reason why I like this, like I said, uh, while you can still do the pure plays, you can also bounce back to this, or you can just go for this and then have more pure plays on the follow-up. Um, but this combo that I'm going to show you guys is absolutely insane. So there's a reason that the only reason why I'm like playing this stuff is because for one, I need, I wanted to switch it up. I just wanted a dip, something different. And number two, uh, when I found out how that com when I found out that combo last night, I just couldn't believe how crazy it was. I just kind of played it through and found out like how it was working through the thing. And I had to double check like multiple times if it was actually illegal, legal plays. So yeah, it was just crazy, but, uh, yeah, so we're joining the problem here, but at the same time, I needed a bit of a switch up, so I figured, why not? I kind of wanted to play like something synchro. I tried playing synchro, but again, I found it just wasn't. There's just no way to, for synchro to keep up right now. Um, maybe unless you play punk, uh, it's pretty interesting, right? But uh, the this variant again can still play a bunch of non-engine while still doing what the uh, uh, the best deck of the format, right? Punk punk uh, adventure does, except without the adventure stuff where they can stop a, a bunch of hand traps going first, right? They're more protected, obviously, because adventure, anything with adventures, like, kind of way, uh, these other decks kind of way out to lunch because it's like a form of omnigation for free, is what it is. We don't have the adventure engine, so we just have to work around that. Going into the side deck, uh, this can really depend on what your locals is, but I think this is pretty standard. Um, so, Gamma Package, right? Gamma Package is insane. I reverted back to a common rare driver because the ultra rare one, just you draw it way too much, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh double draw uh you can play this at three uh the only thing is a lot of decks if you draw them now they're on gamma like uh if you play try to side this against punk uh theory on and stuff they'll just gamma you and if they resolve gamma you're probably losing the game so the only time i really think this is effective against is drytron so drytron's seeing a surge because it won uk nats but i really like the deck's good but i really don't think it's that great i think it just has some hype because of one nats like it's one of those decks i think is gonna have hype for a little bit like a little surge and then just kind of like falls off especially with the, the new decks that are coming out uh, i'll just go back to like kind of like a rogue contender like a tier three tier three is even a thing i don't know um so yeah just double double draw and lock for now and for the last hand trap triple imperm so imperm just hits everything really well so if i'm going second i'm going to take all my going first uh cards out like the cards I'm gonna be taking out uh, going first, I can show you right now what I'll be taking out. Is um, let's see, 
So Vice Typhon, I keep in going second. Or sorry, if I go in second, I'll show you the cards I, I take out. So Vice Typhon, I always keep going second because it's a form of extension. I take out this, this, uh, and these. So I think I actually haven't even sided with the uh, <laughs> the uh, this variant. Uh, so there's only 40, so it's a bit harder to uh, side out. But uh, anyways, like the cards that I'd for sure take out would be uh, Map, Map, Headhunt, and then uh, License. And then I'd find a way to kind of fit in uh, at least like Triple Gamma and then, or the Gammas and the Imperms, right? So I try to find out like another, oh, sorry, the Scythe is here too. So I get rid of Scythe as well. And then I just find out like another card to take out like, even possibly call by just be, depending on the deck I'm playing uh, against. So yeah, this deck is very easy. The pier is even easier because you have uh, typically like 41 to 43 cards. It's a lot easier to side out like eight to nine cards, no problem. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's uh, Imperm just hits everything right now, right? Um, and if you pair it with another hand trap, like a nib or even like another veil, it can literally just stop turns right now. So yeah, triple Imperm, uh, triple Dark Ruler. So, like I said, a lot of decks, especially if you, like, kind of, like, slow the deck down and then you just have a Dark Ruler, um, you can, like, slow a deck down uh, and then they kind of, like, like the Punk decks and then they can literally just, like, go on uh, uh, the Dagda, the most common play of all time is, like, your Dagda, your Hulk Dagda play where they just try to pop up TG. Um, and then you literally just, they have to do that in the main phase. A lot of decks, like, are just kind of, like, main phase reactive now rather than standby phase. So you can just go, like, Dark Ruler and then it just kind of shuts them out, right? So yeah, Dark Ruler is actually pretty nice right now. Um, the only thing is going second is everyone's on anti-spell, including me, right? Um, so you have to watch that. Like, and you can't play, it's hard to play uh, droplets right now. Um, so it depends. This could also just be another hand trap, really. But uh, I think I play enough. It could, it could be like a token collector, right? Um, but for my locals, no one's, there's only like a couple guys that play Adventure, right? And it's for like Adventure Dragon Link. So uh i'm not really too and there's like one sword soul but honestly the hand traps just kind of blow them out of the water anyways so is what it is uh then last for the side deck is anti-spell so anti-spell is like auto win you flip this against like drytron it's so hard for them to win um yeah i don't know this just hits everything right like a lot of going like it stops dark ruler um and then you gotta think like it basically against most decks right now it turns out this one card turns out half a hand uh so it's basically just worth running, right? So gives you a lot of protection. If you flip this with a full board, you are not, there is no way you're losing the duel. And uh, especially if you're scared of, um, you can also like just kind of hold this if they have Dark Ruler. And then if you have Siegfried up, you can just flip this, chain Siegfried, and then they are completely screwed up. Like if I had Siegfried up, I just hold this and just wait for a Dark Ruler or a Droplets, right? So if they Droplets me, they don't chain a, they don't ditch a trap. I can just flip this, Anti-Spell, and then just chain a Siegfried. Yeah, Anti-Spell is kind of insane in this deck. Okay guys, so yeah, that was the uh, deck. So as you can see, a little bit different spin take on the deck. I needed a little bit of a refresher, honestly, from just playing pure. Um, and the format's kind of stale on its own. So I figured I needed some more life to be brought to this deck just to be able to keep playing. And uh, yeah, this I'll show you the combo in a second and it, I just couldn't believe how crazy the combo was. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot different than what you guys are used to, but uh, yeah. I will jump right into this combo, and after that combo, I guess I'm just going to, yeah, end the video there, because that's just the only one I really want to show you guys, and you can get kind of an idea of um, how you can do other uh, different hands, and uh, you, always, you always have access to the pure options as well, too, right? So, uh, the more, the when you know that combo, you can kind of go a bunch of different routes, right? So, yeah. All right, guys, let's get into this, this uh, big-time combo. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, so let's jump into the new three-car combo. So... This can be, it's basically your standard uh, combo, right? Typically, like, this is a Swirl Slime, and then you just go Baron combo. Uh, this, I'm going to show you how, starting off with Pure and having uh, these two, or literally, like, it could be, like, a Swirl Slime instead, or, like, anything, because Swirl Slime's part of this combo as well. So it's basically, like, uh, Kepler, Copernicus, Griffin, and Swirl Slime. So when you have an arrangement of those, uh, you can kind of just go for that, right? You can also go for Baron combo if you just have Swirl Slime here, too, to safely play around Nib, right? Uh, Nip Veiler will just kill you anyways, but if they have it, they have it. Um, but this, this, uh, combo here, um, it's going to be hard for them to understand where they're going to hand trap you. Cause it's kind of the same idea as when I first played the Synchro list with the Sword Soul. With the Sword Soul cards in the extra deck, uh, people had no clue where to hand trap me and, uh, it was just to my ultimate advantage. So kind of going this route right now is actually pretty safe. Uh, because they don't, they, they're going to see cards like how can be like, oh crap, like what the hell's going on, right? Or, uh, yeah, so we'll get into this now. So, 
this combo I'm telling you right now is insane. So we'll go Piri Map effect. And the reason why um, I really like this is because, like I said, this variant is because I can still play all this non-engine, like the same I would in Pure, but it's just more explosive, right? Does it have the same resilience as uh, um, uh, Pure? Not, it depends, right? Because you you don't have, like, you only have one of the XYZ and two of the Gilgamesh, but you also have your synchro plays to back yourself up on the follow-up. So I think it honestly has the same resilience and a bit more ceiling. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a matter of testing, right? Like, I haven't brought this to a tournament setting yet, but... So yeah, going to be at 4,000. You, you don't have to start off here. I just kind of wanted to show you guys because for the term, the sake of, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Whatever his name is. You know what I'm talking about. So Kepler will use the effect to search. And as I do this combo, I'm only going to show you one. I'm going to show you the different things you can do to do uh, to switch it up if you guys want. Um, this is why I'm kind of starting out with period because I want to show you guys different things you can do, right? So gate effect can search. You're going to search the swirl slime here. Search Swirl, going to search Swirl. Swirl Slime is going to use the effect of Fusion Summon with Griffin. Okay. And go ahead and summon the Genghis. Going to banish Swirl Slime. Use the effect of Special. <clears throat> going to use Summon Cop. Chain Link 1, target Chain Link 2, Foolish. Just pretend our, our opponent has no hand traps. Even if they have Dark Lure, it doesn't even matter, to be honest. Um... This gets sent. So we're going to send a Lamy and not the Necro Slime. We're going to send Lamy here. And I'll show you why in a bit. So we're going to go specials. Uh, Griffin effect to add. So you're going to add the trap. So when I found out I could add the trap here, it just, I just, it just ultimately made this combo insane. Like, it was just crazy. So now I add the trap, right? Overlay these two. Caesar, Kingtel. Kingtel can't burn, right? Because uh, we didn't take any burn damage. I mean, we like paid so unfortunately imagine if period map was burned that would be insane but oh well uh we're just gonna link these two off so king tell and uh kepler we're gonna link them for uh dagda so we're gonna summon dagda here and this is kind of where the game kind of changes right so we're gonna use king tell to uh foolish burial uh so if i make a little hiccup during the combo i mean i just did this kind of like late last night and I haven't really done it since. It's a new combo, but I mean, I think I'm kind of hardwired when I do these, so to understanding how the combo works. So we're going to send Vice Typhon specifically, okay? Because now we can trigger the Typhon afterwards. So we're going to send Typhon to Fusion Summon. And like I said, the reason why you want to do Typhon here is because you can trigger its effect to Special Summon, and which triggers the Dagda. So you're going to Special Summon the... Uh, I'll put Genghis here, it doesn't really matter. So Genghis, we're going to use the effect of Lamia to send the uh, Gate for Cost to Special Summon itself. This now triggers Lamia, so Chain Link 1, uh, or the Summon of Lamia now triggers the Genghis. So Chain Link 1, Genghis, Chain Link 2, Dagda. So uh, Dagda is going to resolve, I guess. So set the Scythe, right? I'm just going to keep him face up. And Genghis is going to trigger to target special summon the Caesar, okay? So you're summoning Caesar now, right? You're going to use Lamia. And now you can kind of see, kind of have an idea of like where it's going from here, right? So summon Halk. Halk easy effects. Summon from deck. And then we're gonna summon. Now this is where it could get a little bit different, right? But I wanna run you guys through this. So I'll revert back to this. I'll revert back to uh, this scenario here just so we kind of know where we're at. Um, but uh, this is where you can kind of do things a little bit different, right? So um, anyways, I'm gonna go from what the normal combo is here. So we're gonna use these two, the ghost and the, uh, to make a Baron, right? This is level 10. Now, let me just touch up here. So even if they nib you here, they have to nib you here, right? So. If they nib you here, and again, they don't know, like, what you're going to do here, right? They might not see any threat, because, like, if people know the old Synchro list, they know that you need, like, when you have the Alexander and the, the Tuner, that's where you nib, right? But even if they nib you here, this adds you the Contract spell to do a Fusion Summon, which then you can have uh, XYZ, uh, you can have the uh, Machine X and the Headhunt, right? So you're fairly protected from nib, because uh, if you have a Hand Trap too, it's really good, right? But uh, Machine X and Headhunt with a contract is like really, it's really strong, right? So um, Headhunt's just crazy. And the Machine X against certain decks, especially a lot of the Synchro decks, is just insane. So, yeah, this is where they would nib you. Um, but if they don't know the deck again, they might just let you kind of do something. But here, you make a Baron, right? And this is what I'm saying where you kind of have the upper hand because if anything, they might stop, try to stop the Hulk. If they do, it is what it is. You kind of just go ahead and make uh, your Synchro plays and you have this to make a Baron on your follow-up or something, right? 
So there's a lot of things you can do here, right? It plays. That's why it kind of plays effectively around certain things, especially with the opponent not having the advantage of knowing what exactly you're doing, right? So I just got some Baron here, right? Uh, Ghost isn't going to use the effect because he. What's the point of foolishing another Griffin? Am I right? So going to summon the Baron, right? So now Baron's out. We have we have we're protected from Nib. Um, they're probably not going to see it coming, right? And you kind of want to play it out to like where it's not much of a threat, and then all of a sudden you just drop Baron, right? Just uh, table presence, right? You're going to link these two off. You summon Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is going to use the effect, so now you got a huge advantage because Gilgamesh is resolving. Uh, when Gilgamesh resolves, it's just resolves is just insane. You're going to scale the Ragnarok. And you're going to scale the Griffin, right? And then this, sorry, I forgot to uh, say this. I got a judge call or whatever. So we're adding the Swamp, right? We're going to add the Swamp King. And uh, the reason why we do want to do Swamp King instead of, because uh, we revived this, right? If we revive this, we could still send a Necro Slime, but we wouldn't have a contract for uh, Machine X, right? So we're linking off the Caesar, and this gets a Swamp King. Swamp King, uh, I don't know, I just, it doesn't matter what you scale here. I'm just going to scale Griffin, get it out of the scale, so this, so uh, the Machine X can just kind of go, right? Uh, Swamp King's going to use the effect. We're going to use the, uh, it actually depends what you want to use here, right? So um, I'm going to use the effect of Swamp King. Let's say I don't need a, uh, I probably don't need King Tell anymore. And I probably, well, I might just get rid of the uh, ghost to be honest. Um, I want Griffin in here so I can put it back in my scale for Machine X on the standby phase, if that gets to that point. Um, I don't know, let's just say I get rid of the uh, Genghis too. I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't get rid of the high Genghis, but just, just to show you guys what you can do here, right? So I'm gonna summon the Genghis. This triggers Ragnarok, so typically what I would do is summon the second Genghis, then overlay to make the, uh, uh, Caesar, right? But what you could also do is just summon a Genghis, and then you can just uh, revive the uh, Ghost, so I didn't banish Ghost, and you can make a Siegfried here. That way you're kind of protected from Imperm. Uh, if they if they have if they hard draw an Imperm, and they just Imperm your Baron. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter because uh, um, you still have so many plays. They still have to get, get around a bunch of things anyway, so it's not really a big concern. Um, or if they Imperm your uh, Scythe, right? If they Imperm your Scythe, then you still have plays. Uh, because this can just tag out and make another Baron. Basically, then it just becomes full uh, Baron combo. But yeah, so you can just summon Siegfried here if you want. But uh, for me, the rank 6 is just too good. So I'm going to go ahead, summon... So here you summon the rank 6, right? And uh, you're going to banish the Ghost, right? So to summon the... Uh, so let's put this back. Uh, yeah. So basically, just Ghost gets banished because it recycles something. I just recycle back the card I banished, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so this is your end board, right? So you're basically going to go Baron. On your turn, you're going to go Baron to pop Scythe. This way on your standby phase, you're going to uh, threaten them with the Baron to bring this back, right? So basically what happens here is uh, you have the Gilgamesh, right? Oh, sorry. I almost forgot about this. Machine X. So this is your end board, okay? This is your end board. Baron will pop this on your turn, and then you pass. So basically there you go. If they don't... They need, for one, they need droplets, right? So if they droplets you, they're either going to have to go uh, droplets, get rid of three or four to turn out your whole board. And if they do that, you have headhunt, which if they neg three even, any deck right now, if they neg that much, they can't play around a headhunt because headhunt just gets rid of, what are they going to do with two cards with a headhunt, right? And if they turn out three, right? If they, if they, if they they're going to only have one card in their hand if they turn out four, all four of these. Headhunt will get rid of that one problem. If they get rid of these three, they still have to deal with Machine X. Machine X for two and a Headhunt. It's literally a bulletproof combo. And you go Baron Effect to target this, right? They're going to be like, they can't, if they Imperm, you just negate it, right? But basically, like, they're not going to do that if, if they're smart, right? They're, you're going to go bounce back and then Scythe. If they Imperm it, it is what it is. It doesn't really matter too much. Because what you can do is just go like TG, pop uh, an Adventure card, right? So you summon the uh, Adventure card. So basically what happens, this goes back, you summon this, right? Uh, you pop their, if they, if they have the adventure card, right? Uh, the uh, Like a lot of decks are playing the adventure engine, you just pop the uh, adventure spell, and then you just go like effect synchro and you get a Baron back out. So your Baron just recycles back. Now the cool thing you could do, if you didn't want to play TG, you felt like you just wanted to do this on the main phase for whatever, you didn't want to play against Dark Ruler, you could also play uh, uh, Shooting Riser Dragon. Right? You can play Shooting Riser Dragon. So Scythe is resolved. You can play Shooting Riser Dragon, send a Lamia, and then use Shooting Riser to make an 11. And since you're already down uh, to 2k, you just summon this and it gains 6k. This is your board, and he gains 6k on the battle phase. 
that's what they have to deal with okay that's a three card combo isn't that insane so let's like re revert a little bit right so uh before i got to the gilgamesh right so i'm gonna go back to that uh game state i was just telling you about uh so this i think all goes back in i think this goes back sketchy revert i know so i'm gonna just put this out this hasn't been here yet this is here this is here um this is in the grave i think yeah i think i don't know let's just put let's just, we're just trying to revert the situation here so this goes here this was here and this is yeah, yeah so that that was it right so Halk summons this right if you did it if you didn't want to summon baron you could also just do this it becomes the same thing just you can't do the baron on standby phase thing you would just uh use this in the main phase because if you do this you summon uh, the ash blossom let's just say these two you go off the same combo right you can make psychic end which gains 6k it'll gain 6k uh sorry this isn't supposed to be here either but psychic end so right it gains 6k on your opponent's battle phase and they still have to deal with all this and then baron can also come out right so but you can do the scythe pop uh you summon this right the uh i don't know where tg is right but you summon the tg it pops this and then you make uh baron you can also do that too right uh, so you're probably not going to do that, right? You're probably just going to go for the Baron play because Baron pop and Scythe and the stand, uh, to summon it in standby is very well protected. And like I said, for them to really truly out that, they they need a droplets. They need droplets for like three. And even if they droplets for three, they, they have to, they basically are going to hit the rank six, the uh, Scythe and the Hulk, right? And then uh, in that case, you just have Headhunt and the uh, Machine X. So yeah, guys, uh, that was the three-card combo. Now that you've seen that, um, yeah, there's not really much else to say. I mean, that's the combo. Now, like, now that you've seen that, you can kind of see, get an idea of how it works. Um, and then when you're playing it through, uh, when you're playing more and more combos, um, you can just kind of figure out ways to do it while you're playing, right? But when you know the basis, it, that's kind of just a way at the starting point, right? So yeah, that combo was insane. Um, I had to showcase that to you guys. It... Um, I know like a lot of people aren't gonna like the fact that I put like Hulk and Scythe, but it's just a little switch up in. I mean, the thing I really like about DDs and I always have liked about DDs is the fact that uh um it's the fact that it mirrors a lot of sync like whenever a synchro deck's really good in the format, it can really mirror because it can always play this the, the power the powerhouse cards, right? It always can mirror what that deck does, but also do it better. And like I said, that combo doesn't really die to nip. For one, they don't know where to hit you. Like, they're going to be really confused. Like, when I first played the uh, Synchro List at a tournament at Carta Magica, no one knew exactly, like, what I was doing. No one knew where to hit it. It's the same idea as this. All of a sudden, you summon Dagda, and they're like, what the heck's going on? And then they're going to be, like, forced out with Hulk. And uh, if they nib you, right, if they try to nib you before you go into Baron, you still have Machine X Headhunt and potentially a Hand Trap, right? Um, so, yeah. The deck is pretty insane. Uh, I'm gonna going forward. I'm gonna be playing the hybrid list. Uh, this, like I said, if you can play uh, ten non-engine, eleven non-engine cards in a forty-card list, uh, that's pretty insane, right? So, yeah, guys, I hope you guys like that. Um, it was literally just a random brainstorm I had last night, and then I just kind of like went through with it. I couldn't believe it works, and yeah, that is like the ultimate combo. <laughs> it's just crazy because head on head on is insane, and then when you pair it with all that, it's just literally the craziest combo ever and um yeah you get a baron back too it's just it's just so insane it's just so insane so yeah guys i hope you guys like that if you have any ideas from that uh yeah take them away like i said you guys play shooting riser but i mean playing the tg also gets rid of a back row if, if you already resolve the uh scythe and then you can just bring back a baron um it's just crazy like it's just insane you can still do the same exact same plays you would in pure right it doesn't change so yeah, higher higher ceiling and then your bounce back is just insane. It's just a it's just a different way to play it right now and it's really fun. So yeah. All right guys, hope you guys like that and I'll see you in the next one. Stay jacked.